All right, the weather's a bit average today, as you might see in the background, but we're going to do a run through on the Hitchhiker Adelaide 180 single axle caravan. It's got everything in it. You won't believe how much stuff we've got to show you in a minute. We're going to treat this footage like you're a novice, though, so we'll probably talk about stuff you don't need to know. It does come with a breakaway, so it's a safety feature. If the pin pulls out, the brakes activate and your tail lights come on. Very handy to have. The Adelaide 180 will also come with an Anderson plug for charging your battery and a 12 pin to run your travelling lights and indicators, stuff like that. And the bigger pins are what's going to power your fridge because it's got a nice big three-way fridge in it. Important to get that right because different vans, different 12 pins. We've also got two gas bottles on the front, nine kilos. Getting them from a camper agent down here in Adelaide, they will be full when you pick it up. Leave that pointing at the one that you're using all the time. So we're going to use that one. I'm only going to turn that over once the gas bottle is empty on that side. If I drive around like that, I've got no idea which one I've been using. I'm going to run out of gas completely. So leave it over there. We've also got a tap on the A-frame. Make sure it's turned off. It's a good habit to get into when you're doing your hook up and unhook routine to just check it. You don't want to lose all your water out of a faulty leak and tap. And on the corrugations, it can happen. Front window we'd normally talk about right at the end to make sure you pack it down. In this sort of weather, I'm not going to pop it up and down, but it's an easy thing to do. On this model, we've got the nice big tunnel boot going all the way through, so you can get heaps of stuff in there. It's also where we locate the battery for your breakaway. It's independent of your caravan, so it's always going to work. You do have lights up in your front boot. If it's a good free camping trip you're on, make sure you turn those things off. They just use them power for no reason at all. You also get all your keys tagged up so you know which key's doing which. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're not. We've got your radio antenna and your TV antennas up on the roof. I haven't wound it up yet. We'll do that from the inside. I'm sure you know what they look like though. Your water system in the Hitchhiker 180 is very easy. Single filling point for both of your tanks. So imagine you've got one massive tank um, instead of two separate ones. You've also got a mains pressure inlet. Oh, you don't have to get down here, trust me, it's down under there. So you can just connect your hose onto it. This one has not got a grey tank on it, but you can get that as a feature. So the water's all going to come out here into my bucket because we don't want wet concrete out here today. Silly, isn't it? Your hot water service is back up under there. It's a 28 litre swift stainless steel hot water system. The only maintenance you ever need to do to it is occasionally undo the screws and blow the spiders out. Get the bugs out, get the dust out if you've been enjoying yourself on the country roads. Other than that, leave it alone. It can get a bit warm, so make sure you're not looping your power cord over it or hanging tea towels on it. It won't enjoy it very much. Fridge vents, keep them clean. Occasionally take the vents off and it's just these little tags here and get in there and give it a clean out. Again, you might get some little friends living in there because it's a nice warm cavity. And that's your gas exhaust. You don't have to take any caps or covers off. If it's running on gas, that'll be nice and warm so I can warm up the digits. Don't squirt water up. It's the back of your fridge, it'll get wet. That's the jacking point. We'll show you the jack when we get around the other side. It's got all the fittings for it so you can elevate and change the tyre if you need to. Now on this model, I've put 55 PSI in the tyres. If it was a twin axle, slightly larger, I'd probably only put 50 in. It is a bit of a feel thing for your van, but higher we generally find is better. People quite often travel too low and the van will move around on the road a bit. The bit nobody likes to talk about, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Your toilet. To get him out, it's just that little blue lever. Once it's out, extend your drag handle so you can walk off elegantly through the caravan park. When you get there, unscrew the cap, push the blue button so it lets a bit of air in so it pours out nice and easy. The main things to remember other than that, use the chemicals. You don't want it coming out the same as it went in. If you're off empty in this and you're not travelling by yourself, leave the door open. If whoever you're travelling with opens the toilet now, they'll see daylight. Hopefully they'll go, something's not right, I won't use it. If that door's shut and they open the toilet, you might come back to a bit of a surprise. Make sure it locks in when it goes in. Your spare tyre, good idea to keep an eye on the tyre pressure. There's no point having a spare if it's flat. We've got the nice two-prong bumper so you can fit a jerry can or two on there, but nothing over the, the sort of weight of a spare. 
if you're going to put a generator on you, we want to build it with a few more prongs. Nice, nice flat wall. You can get the model with a rear camera on it. Not a bad idea either. Ooh, that's the utility part. Now we're around on the fun side. Things like your picnic table. They're only rated to 20, 25 kilos tops. So if you're packing your esky, you can put your slab up there, you pack your esky, you can't put your esky up there. It's not designed for a lot of weight, so it's not a kid-friendly seat either. You've got 240 outlet, so once you're plugged into a power source, you've got power, or you've got 12 volt, USB and antenna. So you can bring your TV out and watch the Commonwealth Games or whatever might be on at the time you're looking at this video. Up towards the front end again, we've got your gas bayonet fitting. So if you've got the appropriate barbecue, you're allowed to hook up to your caravan. Up in the other side of your tunnel boot, we're not sure if that scratchy noise is in there from the door or not, is your handle for the stabiliser arms, the stabiliser legs. Whack it in, tension them up. We've also got your awning hook. Um, we'll have that on a different link though, because of the day it is. Most new vans, in fact, all of our new vans, will come with a jack. It may not be the trailer mate jack, but if it is, you're winning because you can use it as your jockey wheel in most models, but it's the easiest of the jacks around the place. Well worth getting familiar with it, so you never have to use it. Also up in this side, you'll find your VIN plate. Different models, if it's a different boot, might have the VIN plate differently, but make sure you know where it is, because it's got your weights and stuff like that on it. Oh, long way down there. Now, because it's cold out here, we're gonna jump inside. After you. One of the beauty things about a hitchhiker is the control panel is always centrally located, so all the bits you need to get to are all there. Your solar controller. The style might vary, but you can keep an eye on your battery through. It works all the time as long as your panel's nice and clean. Your 240 isolator. Same as your house. If it flicks down, something's wrong. Normally there's a power surge in the caravan park. Your 12 volt fuses will give you a map, so you know which fuse is doing which. In this particular van, there's also an LED strip that'll light up to tell you which fuse has actually popped. You should have a tank gauge. So you push the button, you can see how much water you got. Now we're only about half to a quarter full because we've been running lots of tests on this one to make sure everything's working nice and sweet for the customer when he picks it up today. We've also got these three main switches. They're the ones you're gonna play with. In today's example, we're gonna use the tank water. So I'm turning the pump on. If I hook up to the mains hose, leave it off. You don't need it. Run the hot tap. Wash your hands. Get rid of the COVID bugs or whatever you might be doing. It's just a way of making sure you've got water on board and it's a full hot water service. That's your electric switch. So up is off, standard, down is on, and that's your gas hot water switch. That water's already nice and hot because I turned it on prior to us shooting this video. Being a 28 litre tank, it'll take about 20 minutes to get hot. If that red light's flashing at you all the time, you know that you've got an issue with lighting up on your gas. Um, it's normally you haven't opened your bottle. So now it's nice and solid, we're actually running it on both. I'll turn that off and I'll turn that off so I don't want to waste it. If you leave them on, you're going to reduce how much water you got in there and you might get coughing and spluttering again. Because of course water turns into steam, the steam's going to pressure relieve. So if it coughs and splutters a lot, just turn it off between use. Because your awning's on a separate video, when you jump in your van, just do your hot water. You know you've got water on board, you're safe for a while. In this exact model, we've got the big Dometic three-way fridge. We're running on automatic, which is what you probably do most of the time. If we lose 240 volt power, it's gonna jump to gas by itself. When we hook up the car, it'll go to battery by itself. That's why it's automatic. I can tap and turn, which is a tricky little get your fingers in the right spot, I can manually light it on gas. I'd only really do that if I was running a generator, for example, because then the generator is just going to feed the battery and the aircon, not the fridge. If I try and light it on battery, light it on battery, <laughs> it'll come up with an error. And that's the error that you'll see if it doesn't light on gas. Same reasoning, you've left the bottles closed off or whatever it might be. So if you see that, it's just a matter of having a look and seeing what it's all about. But if you leave it on auto most of the time, no dramas. You do get all the books with a new hitchhiker, so you can work things out. Nice and cold, bit hard to show you the frost on the telly, but you can spin these out when you're not using your van and it helps hold your door open so it doesn't get funky in there if you've left stuff in there. 
That's when you'd formally turn your fridge off, which is holding that button down. If you know how to use your fridge and you make sure your beer is always cold, you know how to use your hot water so the dishes are always clean, you can have a rinse if you need to, you're not going to have any problems in your van. Everything else pretty much is a new appliance. Things like your stove, yes, it's a stove. You've got an electric element, which if you know you're not going to use it, find your power point, which in this case is down there, and turn it off. Because that way you or the kids can't accidentally turn it on when you're not looking. It's a good idea to trace all your power points. So if you were to ring us one day and say, Dave, I'm away camping at the caravan park. I don't have 240 volt hot water. I'll be looking for the power point that it's plugged into. A kettle or a pot's pulled the cord out. Same with your fridge. There's a power point under there that locates it. I'm not sure if uh, cameraman Mickey can actually see in there, but it's also a good idea to locate where your gas valves are, not that you'll ever need them, and where your water pump is. So if you have left the front tap loose and you hear that humming all day, you know what it is. Slightly different layouts will be a different video. Things like your microwave, the only thing we suggest is not to travel with that in. It's big and it's heavy and it's gonna move around. So we'll take that out for travel or wrap it up in some good solid tea towels so it's not gonna move around. Normal range would function. Bits and pieces. Now, stereo. In the current version of the Hitchhikers, the stereo is not just your CD player and your radio. It can also be a DVD player to play through your TV. The benefit of that is you're going to get sound out of your roof speakers. Now, I've just tried to turn your TV on, but I haven't got your antenna up, so I'm going to wind him up now. And I'm not sure if Harry can see through the roof. But you can see the antennas up. If you can point up through the roof ceiling, yeah, you can. Once it's up, you can spin it around. What I like to do is offset the closed down peaks. So I know from inside now that my antenna's up, regardless of where everyone else is pointing. When it's packed down time, line up the peaks. Because then you know that you're putting it down. It's just a habit to get into, so you don't have to look up in the rain. If I wanted to use a DVD player that happened to be on the back of my telly, I just choose the input or the source, depending on what the mode, model is, and change it to DVD mode first. It powers up that bit of your television to suck the disc in or spit out the disc that's in. Don't just keep jamming discs in, because once you get more than one in there, it's not going to like it. If you put your DVD in there, you're just going to choose your AV input if you've connected on the back. We normally take these off for travel, um, in which case we'll put it back in the box. You guys will probably keep it up on top of the bed. The best tip with that is to pull the power first, so then you can't upset any of your fuses by tapping the live power cord around. If you're using your rooftop antenna, make sure that little light's on. It might be green, it might be red, depending on the model of booster, but if it's off, you're not getting a digital picture out of that antenna. Now, I better pack that down because I've lined up the peaks, otherwise I'll make a goose myself. Easy peasy. Now, these ones with the windows, it's a concertina-style blind, up and down, release all your latches, push your window out, and you can actually tension them up to where you like. It's a nice deep tint so people can't see in. This one's also got a couple of locking spots if you like a little bit of venting while you're cooking or just a bit of fresh air around the place. For travel, make sure they're locked. Things like your aircon, we're going through all the heavy appliances. Point and shoot. This is the Dometic Ibis 4. You can't even hear it on the video. I can hardly hear it in here. They don't make a lot of noise. Anything I do with the remote, I can also do on the touchscreen. So if I've lost that or taken the batteries out, the only manual part of the ends, so you can point a bit more air whichever direction you like. Some of these come with lights in them, but um, not the Ibis 4. Now, I'm going to turn that off because it's getting ridiculously hot in here. You can mount that if you wish, but don't mount it on a sidewall. Mount it on something you know quite often they're mounted up there, for example because you know that on the inside of that cupboard, you're not going to upset any wiring. Easy enough to do if you're in the mood. Up in the bedroom, come to the bedroom with me, Mickey. You've got these lovely little 12 volt points so you can keep your phone charged at night and all that sort of stuff. Any of these, you have to be plugged into a source like a caravan park power or a generator. But if you know you've got 12 volt to charge your phone, everyone's happy. Lift up your bed, plenty of storage. Of course, that's your tunnel boot. So you've got to you know, put it somewhere, but you'll find you can get heaps of stuff in there. Nice big solid mattress, all the support frames in it. 
This one's got the bolster so that you can make your bed longer when it's bedtime, fold it up like this when it's not. Easy peasy. These lovely little lights, it's not just a blue mood light. You hold the button in, you get bright white. So you can read your book in bed if you haven't got your mood light on. We've gone for the L-shaped couch. A lot of people love this because they want to stretch out, put their legs out or snuggle into the corner and watch the telly. That can be a bit of a preference thing. There's no right or wrong when you come to tables. It's all about you. We're going to head towards the bathroom. We've even snugged a washing machine in it. This is a 180. It's 18 foot long and we've got everything. You can't, I can't work out what we're missing yet. She's a nice big washer. A lot of people just store their dirty stuff in it and wash when they get home or at a park. It's a good cupboard to keep your smellies in. Things like your toilet, open the lid. The grey lever at the front opens to the cassette. If you see daylight, don't use it. You're making a mess inside somewhere. Once it's open, do what you gotta do. The blue button is flush. It'll flush as long as you hold the button down. Close it off. The longer you flush, the less water you've got on board because it's all going in your cassette because it comes out of your supply. You've also got a gauge down here that'll go progressively from green to red as it fills up. So keep an eye on it. If I spin around nicely now, we've got your big shower on this side. Try and leave the plug in the actual drain plug unless you're having a shower. It stops any bugs getting back in, stops any dust. If you've got a grey tank fitted, stops any vapours from that coming through. What we'll do before we drive off with this with the customer today is we're going to take the head off, wrap it up in something, put it on the floor so it doesn't bounce off when you go through the drain. Exhaust fan, ceiling lights, all the normal bits and pieces. You can get a different door if you like. You can get a mirror on it. You can get the clear one if you're into that, or the frosty is the most favoured one. You can shut yourself in. Little Oki strap to hold the door. Now, if I'm being a prude, and I want to lock myself in here into having a shower, there is an Oki strap to hold it here. I suggest putting a hand towel or something in it, because if I do lock myself in and trip over, not the easiest room in the world to get into. But if I've got a hand towel on there, I can wash my hands, dry my hands. I get something out of the fridge that I've got to crack the top of. I've got a hand towel to help if it's a bit of an old beer that I haven't had for a while. Um, but your bathroom's, you know, a bathroom. We'll turn the light off in there because we don't need the light on anymore. Again, it saves your power. Things like your roof hatch. Yes, you've got a fly screen. Don't drive with it in that fashion. It'll sag and then it won't snug in very neatly. If you're worried about the sun hitting your fridge, shut that one. To open it up, much like your windows, two little latches, pull the handle down, push up. If you get somewhere and it's been hot, crack that when you go into the fridge. All the hot air in your van's escaping before you crank up the air aircon. You can latch it just there, a couple of points to tab it into so it won't fly around on you. Or much like your windows, you can lock it in a just open position for venting. But for travel, make sure she's shut shut. And there's also more light in there, just in case you need more light. Um, this model's just got the standard spin table. You can get the height adjustable ones if you need all that stuff for a bit of a kiddie bed or your dog. People are into that with their dogs these days. You've got to keep them inside on a comfort. Um, the normal magazine rack and coat hook, really good idea because you can hang your hat, your coat quickly, and all the stuff you get at caravan parks and around the place. Keep an eye on your smoke detector. It shouldn't ever go off because you're not going to use it to put this out. Change the battery in this occasionally. That's your actual smoke alarm. So if you know, you've been smoking in bed too much, that might go off. A lot of people take them out if they're cooking toast in their griller. What haven't I spoken about, Mickey? Oh, gas safety. Yes, it's a Swift. We know the issues with that. Air intake, in case there's a gas leak, the fresh air will come in, push the gas, which is heavier than air, down and out your door. So if you are going super dusty, that's where the dust could potentially come in. There's not too many ways you can fix it because by law, you've got to remain open and clear. That's why they put the sticker on there. What you also get when you buy a van from us, we will have for you a big packet of instructions. We don't just leave them loose so it's a big messy bag. We put them in a nice, easy to read folder. You might remember from your music class. All of your appliances will have the manual in it. Some of the bigger companies like Dometic, you can register your product direct with Dometic and that'll activate your three year warranty in this case. It also means if someone's been messing with the controls on your fridge, 
and you're not sure if you're doing it right, you can pull into a Dometic agent, he's already got your details. If there is an issue with your fridge, God forbid, he'll fix it for you. You're already there. Most of the time you're gonna be out in the country, you're not gonna be in a metro area to pop back and see us. But if you are, you can. That'll be stashed in your van once you get everything organized for yourselves. You got plenty of drawer space for everything else. All of these things we like to leave in a drawer for collection so you know where they all are. Things like your outside keys are also gonna end up in that drawer. Toilet chemicals, not worried about the brand of it. Make sure you've got some on board. It's never a pleasant experience emptying those toilets if it hasn't been treated. Your cutting board, obviously put it back for travel. Turn off your bits and pieces for travel. Now, when we do go to leave, if I've popped your car keys up here, I can grab your car keys, go back up your car and start hooking up. And whoever I'm traveling with can start turning off lights and stuff. On most of the solar controllers, there's an isolation option. I've now turned off all the 12 volt power usage in this caravan. What it's also done though is turn off the fridge. So it's a storage option. Different styles of caravans may be slightly different in that, but it's handy to know where that button is in case you've knocked it by accident. We also like to turn off these three for travel, especially your pump. If you knock a tap now, you're not gonna lose all your water. It's all gonna stay in your tank until you get somewhere and that's why you run it when you get there, you'll know if you've got problems. Grab the car keys, hook up, move on to the next caravan park, away we go. Some other things that we provide for you, when the vans come into us, we get one of our techies to go through it head to toe. They isolate absolutely everything that's in your caravan. So when it leaves here today, that's what it is. What we'd like you to do is write another list as you put things in. You might have your hard drive full of movies, you might have your fishing gear, all your hoses, your power cords, your ramps, the stuff you're gonna travel with, isolate it on a list and email it to your insurer. You're covering yourself for what you travel with. Put on your packing list the key number that's on it. Because nobody knows what that key number is for this particular van. But if you know and you lose your keys, the good people at Camac can recut them for you. We also do your wiring diagram. So one to seven, across the country, they run your indicators, your stoplights, your clearance lights. Pin twos will do different things on different caravans and pin eight to 12 will do different things on different caravans. So it's important to know what you need and what you've got. Some of it you can adjust, not all of it. We also isolate where different bits and pieces are so you can find them if you need to. Like in this caravan's case, the battery and the charging system are under the couch. So if you're going to put in more batteries, you can have a look and go, yeah, I can fit more. It's handy to keep that on board. We also like to give you a nice little check sheet. What to do when you get somewhere. Obviously there'll be personal touches, what to do when you pack up. It's a much bigger list because you've got to remember your hoses, your cords, your TV antenna, all that little stuff. If you go through the list, you're not asking the question as you drive off from the caravan park, did you put the antenna down? Is that why people are waving at us? Have we still left something hooked in? The arrival sheet's nice and short. When in doubt, ring us. We keep the photos of the van so we can almost be like we're in it with you. And if it's as easy as Where's the power point for this? We've probably got an idea. Your neighbor may not, he just wants to have a look because he can't believe that you've got all of this in a 180. So you'll hang on to that somewhere. We take care of your warranty back to factory for you so you don't have to stress about doing that. So you'll get these little bits of paperwork as well. Now I've confused my system in there, but that's okay. I think we've touched on just about everything except for the door. Locking from the inside is just the latch here on the standard Camac door. Pushing it down, we're locked. Flicking it up, we're unlocked. And then you use your handle. If I'm trying to split the doors, because it's summer, it's just handle up. We'll separate the two pieces of the door, because of course, that's the bit I'm locking anyway. You get your metal hook, it'll hook into that to hold this door open. And when I lock the door for travel, the handle disappears. If somebody tries to break in and break that, they're going to break the handle, not the lock. When it's out, you just have to give it a flick. Try and keep it vertical. A, it's neat, it stops less water, and people can't, you know, people have been messing with it. Outside light, you probably missed that on the way through, give it a flick. 
The other important thing about picking up from a yard like us is if you've got technical questions about how do I adjust this, how do I do this, how you can ask us. We're not just giving it to you and off you go. Like this guy's case, he can't get here until extremely late, so we're shooting this video for him. He's going to think it's great. He can look it up if he's got questions. Um, I think we're about done. I can't think of anything else, Mickey. Unless you, the viewers, have got a question for me, in which case you'll have to ring us up. Happy camping.